What is the difference between Kabbalah and Hasidus? I have to begin by saying that I've begun to get letters, comments, notes on the what's called Stump the Rabbi, thoughts that we do. I need to say this once, I can't say this over and over again. I don't have the time to answer all of the questions. Frequently, to answer a question means to find my source. And sometimes it'll take me an hour to find my source because I do this, I do the stump to rabbis uh, impromptu. They're not prepared. And oftentimes the questions that people are asking me are in effect, prove it, tell me where you took it from. And I need to apologize and to say this, you're free to ask questions, but I don't promise to answer them all. I just don't have the time. If I answer a question, so if it'll be a maramakam, a source, I'll give you the source. But if it's more involved, I'm either going to make it into a separate session of Stump the Rabbi and address it, or it's going to have to wait for another time. So this fellow who's asking me these questions about Kabbalah and Hasidus does not understand that in five minutes, I cannot do more than I did in the last two uh, times that we discussed Kabbalah and Chassidus. So you're forcing my hand, uh, Mr. Biggest Fan. Um, so I'm going to answer the question, but it's not going to happen in one sitting. It's going to take a number of, a number of uh, rounds, okay? And I'm going to begin with this. Before I get to Kabbalah and Chassidus, I want to talk about something much more basic or more basic, and that is the difference between Chakir and Kabbalah. Jewish philosophy versus Jewish mysticism. And after you address the difference between Chakir and Kabbalah, you can begin to address the difference between Kabbalah and Hasidus. When you talk about the difference between Chakir and Kabbalah, there's two big differences. And I'm going to explain to them, explain each of them to the best of my abilities in, in a few minutes. What is the difference between philosophy and mysticism? The difference between Chakira and Kabbalah, between philosophy and mysticism, is as follows. Philosophy is a system of logic which is in its essence not Torah. Whether philosophy is Greek or it's Egyptian or it's before the Greeks, philosophy is a Goyish system. It's a form of logic. It's hard to call it a science, but it's a form of logic which is based on axioms, based on principles and laws of logic. And it attempts to explain things rationally, logically, in an abstract way. Philosophy was used by Gedele Yisrael, like the Rambam, like the Rasag, like a base of Albu, like a Behuda Halevi and others, to address the problems that Yidin were having because of the radiation, the onset and the radiation of philosophy, Greek philosophy and so on, that became very popular in the Middle Ages, in the Dark Ages. And the Gedele Yisrael had to answer or else the whole generation of Jews or generations of Jews would have been swept away with the fever, with the passion of secular philosophy. So they had to create Jewish philosophy. But philosophy in its essence is not Torah. It's a, it's a system of logic that Gedele Yisrael used to explain Torah, not so much because they were enamored with philosophy, but because they were enamored with Torah and needed to provide answers to the Jewish people, in the words of the Rebbe, who were nevuchim, who were burdened by their exposure to secular philosophies. And uh, Chakira, philosophy has certain axioms, certain assumed truths. The first axiom of Chakira is that God is logic. The truth, period, the truth of everything is reason. Higher than reason is foolish. Everything is logical. In their mind, the greatest thing a human being possesses is his mind. And their incarnations, their, their pieces of elokus, of the divine, the essence of the divine is logic. And something which is illogical is foolish. Of course, their understanding of what it means that God is logic is very involved. Hasidus would say, "Hu echad, hu yadeu edu, and hu amad." It gets very, very involved. This is, of course, the Rambam language. But the bottom line is that they believe that the truth of all was logic. Everything has to be explained logically. But there's another truth to philosophy, and that is that we can only know 
abstract from the applied. In other words, how do we know anything about creation and creator and angels and all the other things? It's from the physical world. You look at the physical world, you understand things about the physical world, then you extrapolate and you say, if the physical world is like this, then the source of the physical world must be like that. If the world is this, then the creator of the world must be like this and so on. So you use logic to understand what you see around you to have a sense of what the creator is. And accordingly, when you use, when you study philosophy, you can only understand of God what the world tells you. You can understand that God, for example, appreciates color and sound and ratio and distances because the world is so rich with color and with sound and with all kinds of other uh, diversity of life and so on. The world tells you a lot about Hashem based on what the world is. But of course, that's basically limited. You can only know God based on what the world is. So Chakira, Jewish philosophy, would use logic to study the world and explain how the Creator, who is the source of the world, is what the world is at a much higher level, at a much deeper level, at a much more unified level, and so on. So you can only know about the Abishta what the world tells you. And of course, you're always stuck in that box that it has to be logical, has to make sense. Kabbalah begins where philosophy ends. The very definition of Kabbalah is, as the word suggests, Kabbalah, it's a tradition, it's a transmission. It was given to us by God. And philosophy is called metaphysics, hateva, beyond nature, beyond the physical. You study the physical to understand metaphysics. And of course, in the Rambam's language, there's two levels of metaphysics. There's Maise Bereshis and Maise Merkava. But even Maise Merkava, we know indirectly from the world. And Kabbalah says that we have a tradition which teaches us things which the world would not tell us about Hashem. And basically, what is it that Kabbalah says that philosophy cannot say is that Hashem is ain't safe. Chakira understands Hashem as being logic, but on a godly level. Ein Seif is higher than logic. And the very essence of Kabbalah is that it begins where philosophy ends. But it's a very different approach. Philosophy says the world is teaching me about God. And Kabbalah says God is teaching me about God. In other words, Kabbalah is taka part of Teda. Kabbalah is part of the oral tradition, transmission we got at Har Sinai. And that's the first difference between philosophy and mysticism. Philosophy knows Hashem from the world and attempts to explain the Creator based on the creation, understanding His unity and His oneness and His timelessness and His inability to change and His perfection, but only from the worldly perspective. The world teaches me that the Creator has to be a perfect version of what the world reveals. And Kabbalah says that the Abish is beyond what the world can teach me, it ain't safe. And of course this is very complicated, but that's the short version. That's the first difference. But there's a second difference, and the second difference is very, very significant. The second difference is that there's a very, very big difference between Chakira and Kabbalah for another reason. Philosophy is a system of logic which allows the human mind to understand God or godliness. When the human mind understands God and godliness, what kind of a relationship does it have with God and godliness? And the answer is it doesn't have a relationship. You understand what God is, you can prove what God is, at least you think you can understand, at least you think you can prove, but it remains exactly that, intellectual. Your brain knows, but your soul doesn't know. There's no intimate connection. The second difference between Kabbalah and Chakir, and that's really the big difference, is the role the Nishama plays, the soul. Philosophy doesn't have this concept of a soul at all. The, the, the mystical concept of a soul, and of course in Hasidus this is even more richly developed and explained, is that the soul is godliness. The soul is not just the life of the person, it's a piece of the Creator, it's a piece of godliness. And therefore, when we speak in the world of Kabbalah about understanding godliness, there is a bridge between the human mind that can understand things objectively in a dispersional way at arm's distance 
and the soul which understands intimately. In other words, in Kabbalah, besides for the fact that you're understanding ideas like Ain't Safe, which are higher than logic, or higher than provable logic, which you don't have in philosophy, there's also what I like to call warm intellect versus cold intellect. Philosophy is cold intellect. You're studying something objectively, something which is separate from you. And you argue that it's preferred to be objective because if you're a part of the study, the study lacks objectivity. When you study something and you want to be accurate about it, you have to remove yourself from it. In Kabbalah, it's the other way around. The way you know godliness, the way you know ain't safe, is by knowing yourself. Not only intellectually, but spiritually. You are a neshama that has all of Sayyidina Nishtashlis inside of herself, inside of himself, inside of itself. And as a consequence of that, when a person learns Kabbalah and understands the Mamalik Kalaman, which is what Chakira explains to you, and then the Seva Kalaman, which is what Kabbalah explains to you, and Chakira does not explain to you, you're able to know the material not only in a cold and an objective, logical way, but in a warm and intimate way, because you know the ideas of Ain't Safe as the Ain't Safe are inside your Nishama. And that doesn't exist in Chakira at all. So I've just told you two differences between Chakira and Kabbalah. The first is Chakira is a system of logic that doesn't go higher than Seichel. And Kabbalah begins where Chakira ends, explaining ideas like Ain't Safe and Sfiris, and we'll talk about this next time some more. And the second difference is that Kabbalah is cold logic. Your ability to understand is based on your separation from the material you're understanding. And in Kabbalah, there's a spirituality to it. In other words, you understand it by knowing it, by finding it inside of yourself. And we'll get to Kabbalah and Hasidus next time.